Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week, first, we are gonna install the PowerFeed gearbox. Big, heavy, awkward, off-balance unit that controls all of the, well, powers all of the power feeds on this entire milling machine. We're gonna try to get it up off the floor and hung underneath the saddle here. And then, hopefully, if we have time, we can get the table off the floor of this table of this big milling machine off the floor up in the air and put in place here on the saddle where it belongs. I'm excited. This thing's coming together. It really is. So thanks for watching. Let's get started on this. So here is a look at the power feed gearbox that I mentioned about, I don't know, two seconds ago. I've been stepping over this now for about a year. Uh oh, and some of you may remember that I had to do a little bit of work on it. Uh, we had a broken dowel pin and I don't know, several little things that we had to uh -oh, fix on this part of the unit. You know, but other than that, I think this thing's in pretty good shape. I don't know, we'll see. Let's see if we can't get this thing raised up and stuck on the saddle of this thing where it belongs. <laughs> so I remember when I took this thing off, off of the mill, that is. What I used is my portable uh, jack, portable pallet jack, forklift. I don't know, I guess it's the appropriate term for it. This thing's awesome, by the way, and was worth every penny I paid for it. Saved my back. This thing's powered by two large 12 volt batteries. It's got, you know, an in integrated uh, charger and all that stuff. All you do is plug it in. It's been, it's been excellent. Golly, that thing's heavy. So I can already see that I've got a problem here, and what I think I should have done is installed this before I installed this crossfeed nut, because this shaft here goes up through the bottom of it, and it's keyed, so I'm going to have a real hard time lifting this up and getting it keyed into the bottom of this uh, cross, or yeah, lead screw nut, whatever you want to call that thing, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take this back out and then install the gearbox and then put this small piece on top of it. That'll save me from having to shimmy this large heavy unit up under there trying to get everything lined up. So let's take this off. So I am trying to make myself wear gloves more often. You know, some people don't like them, some people do, but once you work in grease every single day and you have to wash your hands you know, three or four times a day, man, that gets pretty hard. You know, you start washing away skin, actually, and all that oil and stuff or chemicals that you work in could not be good for your hands. And it's pretty satisfying to work on something that's all goopy and greasy and then pull your gloves off and your hands are clean. So, trying to wear these more often. You know, I don't, I don't do it all the time. But you get the picture. I'm trying. See, now I can just lift that electric motor up and then set this on top of that. See, it's got a keyed hole in there. I think it'll be easier. Oh, don't fall. Eh, not like 
like it can. Stay. Okay, it's close. I got one started. That's always a big step. Oh man, I think I'm gonna have to take this thing all the way back off. This is the shaft that comes from this box and powers a little universal joint here that powers all the gears in there. And it's too long, I think. Let me move this all the way forward. Maybe I'm not wrong. I think I'm right. Are you kidding me? Look at that. That has to be, that's just a cruel joke. Well, it's not looking promising. This shaft is what powers, you know, goes through a coupling on this and powers the, all the gears up front. And it goes through back here. But it's too long to install with that unit. Look at that, Cora. Isn't that a shame? It's a, like a half inch too long. And now I'm going to take that all the way back off to get this in there. But I guess it is what it is. needed. So this drive shaft, that little Cora, kind of slides freely through that slot back there. Hello Cora. And it hooks into this, hello Cora, <laughs> hooks into this universal joint with a, uh, hello, with a tapered pin. So we gotta line that up somehow. It's gotta go the right direction as well. Pretty common, there, there's that way, yeah. Pretty common on machine tools to use tapered pins to fix stuff like this. It's actually an extremely good way, very secure. Okay, that's the way it goes, right like that. Tap that back there to get that to, to go in. Man, that's a tight fit and I don't have it aligned right. Right there, maybe. All the way through anyway. It put something heavy against the back side so I can tap that down in. That's good enough. Can you imagine trying to do this the other way around. That would not be easy. Well, well, 
I hope I had this the right way. So I forgot that I did not drain this gear case. So that's what I'm doing. Let me show you what come out of it. It's not beautiful, but not horrible, I don't guess. I don't think. All right, so I got the sight glass out, cleaned it up. I'm gonna put a new O-ring on that while I'm at it. And here's the magnetic plug that come out of the bottom of this gear box. It's definitely got some sludge on it. Probably fine. So it is a 38 year old, 42 year old gearbox. Yeah, 1980. So, depending on the month. Yeah, so, that's really not that bad. It's a big magnet. It's a little closer look. You know, it's just super fine sludge. I've seen people freak out over that, but really, you know, that's pretty much normal normal wear on an old gearbox. You know, they won't, won't hurt a thing usually. They all are gonna generate some sludge. There, you know, there's no filter or anything on this gearbox, obviously. So not surprising. Hello. <laughs> yeah, you're helping. Sure. So I'm going to put a new O-ring on the sight glass here. That's really the only thing that seals this is O-ring. It's kind of kind of brittle. Now these are uh, nitrile. Just the cheap kit that you pick up from Harbor Freight. You can get them in metric or uh, SE. Super handy. Super handy to keep in the shop. It's that easy. Let's fill up this gearbox. That's it. This thing doesn't hold a whole lot. So every year is the same story with me. I say I'm gonna collect a bunch of firewood so I don't end up midwinter, no firewood, or heat in the shop is basically what that equals. And uh, you know, this year's no different. I've spent all of my time doing everything else while the weather's warm and dry and not cutting firewood. I do have some, and I'm gonna use some to build my first fire in the shop, get a little heat in here. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm across the road from my place using this truck for really what I wanted to use it for, and that's firewood. Pulling firewood you know, out of the woods because I really can't get good access. There's just no way to get across that big rugged creek and stuff, but I can use my winch that I installed on this thing, and I can pull it across. That keeps me from having to cut it up and carry individual pieces. I just pull big chunks across, 
process it here, move it over to the place. Let me share some of what I'm doing with you. So because my truck is kind of on the road and I can't get a straight pull for safety reasons, I don't want to block the road. What I've done is hooked a shackle or a snatch block actually to this tree. And I'm using that to change the angle of my pull. And I'm pulling wood from all the way across that creek, you know, over here to where I can work it, you know, a little easier. So the winch I've got under the front of this truck is the 12,000 pound Badlands winch from Harbor Freight. Not a sponsored thing at all. Elizabeth bought this for me at full price for my Christmas present last year, I think. I don't know, Christmas, birthday, something. Anyway, pretty, pretty nice so far. I've used this thing several times. Nothing industrial, but so far I've had nothing but good experience with this winch. It's got the uh, synthetic rope, which is really nice. One gripe, it's not a quality gripe, it's just a feature gripe, I guess is that for the wireless remote that this thing comes with, there should have been some sort of clip or, you know, clasp, that way you can hang it on your pocket, because this is, I don't know, it's easy to lose because of its size, but yet too big for the pocket. So you gotta end up walking around carrying it, trying to stick it in your pocket, hoping it don't fall out. I may do that, actually, drill a hole or something in this thing to where it's, you know, a little less likely to be lost. It does have a magnet in it, which is nice but that just means you'll stick it on your bumper or something and drive off and lose it probably because it's not a super strong magnet. Strong enough though. So for non-industrial use, I love this uh, braided synthetic cable. You know, no gloves required. I've had a lot of working with steel wire rope and uh, it's not pleasant. The range on this remote is just about the same length as the cable. So. This log gets jammed you know, it'll just start pulling the truck this way. It's stout winch. So this log here is kind of wedged. Actually, I may have to end up breaking it up into a couple couple pieces because I may not be able to pull it out of where it's at in one piece. Thank you. 
So for this old truck, I'd like to find a couple more parts. I'd like to find an original set of tow hooks. This truck did not come with tow hooks, which are super nice in my opinion, especially if you have a winch up front, because then you can run out around a snatch block and back to the truck if you're in a really tight spot. Or, you know, they're great for if you're moving the truck on a trailer to strap it down, if you're pulling somebody out of a hole or whatever. It gives you some place to hook up front, and this truck did not come with tow hooks up front. Also, this truck, at least as far as I'm aware did not come with the bumper horns up front uh, on each side here you know these trucks a lot of times i think it was an option that come with the push uh, horns or the bumper horns what they're called a lot of people took them off because they didn't like them you know it's uh, you know some people liked them some people didn't i think they're kind of neat and would like to put a set on back on this truck um, so bumper horns and hooks i'll hopefully find in the not uh, too distant future stove just to not not always around the stove but you get the idea to help with starting fires get kind of going doesn't take much really fire going they're very nice I've always liked a, a wood fire Save my branches or my kindling. And that's pretty much it, really. Open the bottom up, let it breathe a little, leave it alone for a few minutes. Should get some good heat in the shop.
So it's extremely rare that I run upon a tool that just blows my mind or changes the way that I think about the job that I'm doing. Uh, you know, you wonder how in the world did I ever live without it, right? And for me, the tool that stands out in my mind the most, over the last few years anyway, is a set of precision ground flat stones. And I was introduced to these by my buddy Robin Renzetti, who is a master machinist, all around good guy, and I'm getting a spam call. Nope. These, these stones are not like your standard you know, bench stone. These are ground flat on a surface grinder. They're so flat, if they're done correctly, that all they do is take off any of the high spots or imperfections in a nice flat surface, and they basically glide over all of the non-damaged surface. So if you want to deburr the bottom of a rotary table or you know, a square or any tools that you're going to put on the surface grinder, deburr your magnetic chuck with these without damaging the chuck, super handy. And I can't believe that I didn't know that these existed. And I really underestimated their use until I actually got a set. So if you want something to add to your toolbox that will make you smile and highlight all the imperfections in your work, I'll get you a set of these stones. They are awesome. And I find myself using them here every day almost. But there you go, get you a set of these. You will not, you will not be dissatisfied with them. I am certain of that. Make you smile. So this is a big moment. It's time to take this milled machine table off of the ground and get it onto the actual mill itself. We had this ground top and bottom, so it should be in really good shape. Hopefully we're at a good balance point here on our pickup. I'm going to use the cherry picker, the engine hoist, whatever you want to call it, because really it's uh, my forklift will not work for installing this. So let's get all rigged up, get this thing picked up, see if we can't get it to slide onto the, onto the mill. So the top of this table is in really good shape, but it was in pretty good shape before. But seeing as I was having this thing ground anyway, just decided to go ahead and have them dust the top. But it hadn't been dug into other than one spot that I see. And it's, it's amazing to have a table that's this nice on any machine tool that I've ever owned anyway. So this milling machine table is pretty awkward to pick up. I think i got to pick it up long ways and then turn it around. Not for sure exactly. Good job, girl. I'm going to clump you in the head. Watch out, girl. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. That's not gonna work, is it? We need a shackle. Will you go grab me a shackle, please? They're over there. Let's see if we can't get this table on here without snapping off the end of the saddle or a arm or a leg. It's going to be kind of tricky, I think. This thing is heavy. Okay, 
down just a little. isn't sketchy at all. Not even a little bit. Now I can move this down a bit, keep shimmying it, I think. Set on there now, should. We are good. Boom. There we go. Excellent. Excellent. Table. See if we can't thread in the lead screw. Well, I've ran into a problem, and that is there's two keyed holes uh, through, through this, one right here at this power feed or hand crank. Lead screw's got a keyway cut in it, and it has to go through a hole that has a key in it, you know, here and here. And I've got it all the way to here where the main electric power feed comes in and powers this thing, um, but it's not lining up with that key. So what I'm going to have to do is hook my cherry picker back up to this end of the table and move it enough to expose that area there and hopefully I can you know do it by hand and get it lined up I don't know we'll see there we go 
that was it. This lead screw had to key up with this collar here. It has to do with the power beads. So good progress was made actually. Got the power feed box on, got the drive shaft in, ran a lot of my wire and conduit, got the table on. I didn't finish the wiring on this thing and I didn't show that. Nobody wants to see me putting wires together. But I got a lot of it done. I did run into a big problem though, big problem. And the table actually may have to come back off this machine because in my haste to get this thing together, I forgot that uh, the end stops, electronic end stops for the saddle actually run underneath the table inside of the inside of the saddle there. So I'm either going to have to fish those through, there's a little hole inside here, fish them through possibly, or pull the table off and you know run them the way they were factory. I could run them outside, but I don't really want to do that. So we'll see, you know, chances are I can fish them through, but I don't know. 
anyway, happy with the way that uh, everything's went. I was hoping to run it this week, but it didn't happen. Still got the quill do, got to fit the gears, got a lot of little odds and ends that I have to clean up, adjust. I mean, you get the idea. Not done. Wiring. I am so glad I took these notes over a year ago because otherwise I would have been really struggling. Even with those notes, it, you know, I'm not a wiring guy. But with that, I was able to, to do it. So that's it, I think. It's starting to look like a machine again. So thanks for watching, viewers, patrons, subscribers. Anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, believe me, I really appreciate it um, more than you know. Make sure, if you enjoy the videos, to give me a thumbs up, like, right, same thing. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Get you Make you a YouTube account. It's not that hard. Subscribe to the channel, right? Help me out. Also, you'll get notifications if you're subscribed. And, you, you know, you got to hit that bell button. And, you know, maybe hit it a few times because... Seems like it works sometimes and sometimes doesn't. Posted a couple videos last week. Some people watched them, some people didn't. And if you missed them, it's because you didn't get notified. So do that. Thanks for watching. And I'll uh, see you next time.